Hey, Mark Crawford here. I want to show you the other portion of our solar energy system. This is the guts of it. I know probably you've seen the other video of the outside uh, showing our uh, solar panel. And we have yet to put on a pergola, but anyway. Um, basically, the, the, the wiring for the uh, solar panel comes in right here and goes through this disconnect. We've got uh, a, the same disconnect here and here. This one goes to the batteries. But blade type disconnects, what I, which I wouldn't recommend. They're, they work. They're very low cost, but it's very difficult to get the blades back in once you take them out. Anyway, goes from the disconnect over here to this charger. Let me get a little closer so you can see. This is the Blue Sky charger. And um, the nice thing about the Blue Sky, this is an MPPT charger, which is the only one I would recommend, the only type. There's different brands. But Blue Sky has, has been great for us. Um, the way this works is there's different levels of charging, but this light here, if it comes on where this lamp is, uh, that load light, what that is is a um, basically extra juice that's coming in from your solar panel or wind turbine. And if that comes on, then your batteries really don't need you to use that for something else, for lighting or a fan or whatever. In fact, that's what we're going to be using. We're going to hook it up before the summer so that we can use use it to power this vent fan in our utility room because in the summertime it gets very hot well, from the charge controller we go down to our distribution right down here and normally we have a cover on this but uh, i've got it off right now so that i can show you we had to have a cover for insurance purposes and uh that's a whole story in itself most insurance agents don't know anything about solar so they just throw out things of that nature, which is good to have a cover over it anyway. This is eventually going to be replaced. Actually, this whole board that I'm describing here is going to be replaced as we're upgrading, but this is going to be replaced with a actual panel with breakers instead of the automotive fuses. This is just a shoestring budget method of doing this. You'll see this all over YouTube. The problem that, that uh, I've run into is these blades... Uh, Sometimes don't make a very good connection or over time if you're having to pull them out for any reason maintenance or whatever They uh, they don't like to be pulled in and out very much at all after you do it two or three times then They become loose and it'll have a bad connection this the other one here goes to our refrigerator It has to have a 12 volt Control voltage our refrigerator is actually an RV type runs off electricity 120 volt or propane Which I'd highly recommend they're a little expensive, but there's no moving parts. They'll last forever the blue uh, fuse on the bottom there goes to our house, directly in our house, and we use that power for our ceiling fans and our vent fan in our bathroom. And the only other thing that's on DC from our battery banks, which takes a lot, is our DC water pump here. I've already covered that in another video. It's 12 volt. So anyway, that's what we have there at the top of our distribution area here we have two wires that go to this animal and you zoom in here you can see this is a sun force and inverter and it has four 120 volt uh, outlets on the front they're all four 20 amp I believe and it also has a DC connection right there which is nice handy. Um, this connection here goes up to that transmitter and that's for remote control which is really cool. If you're totally off the grid like we were when we first moved in, uh, you want to make sure when you go to bed at night that this inverter is off. So you don't have to walk out here to the utility room, we can just use the remote from our bedroom and turn it off. The reason you want to turn it off is you don't want any trickle charges during the evening while you're sleeping that would run down your battery bank. So uh, this is turned off completely by the remote. That's cool. Another really cool feature on this unit is the plug-in. This goes to the back of the inverter. You plug this in. Like I say, we're actually on the grid now for part of our uh, power. Uh, that's what the gray wire is here. But 
So this outlet is actually grid power. We plug that in there. That turns this inverter automatically into a battery charger, which is really cool and handy. Um, here in Texas, but we do have some cloudy days in wintertime. Sometimes it's just not enough for the the single solar panel that we have to keep up with uh, the, the usage. That option comes in real handy to plug that in and it automatically turns into a charger. We don't have to get out a generator or, or anything like that to charge our batteries up, which is really cool. Um, the downside of this inverter, uh, number one, it's no longer available. It's, it was a clearance item. So we, we got it like $100 off. Uh, but the major drawback with this is it doesn't like the heat in this utility room. As you'll see here, it looks like these are heat sinks. They're not. They're fake. <laughs> they're just plastic. This one here, this heat sink, it's not a really heat sink. It's just a plastic facade that's put on it, which is that's false advertising, I guess. <laughs> but, um, so it, it tends to, the, the fans tend to run on it a lot during the summertime. Um, and the, but the, the main, um, uh, downside of this thing is, um, it says maximum output 1000 watt. I don't know if you can see that on there. Maximum output 1000 watt. I'm trying to get to where you can see it. But it has a peak output for surge of, um, I believe 3000 watt. And we were hoping to run at least a small window unit air conditioner with a 3000 watt peak performance, but it didn't perform that way. It tripped right off. So maybe that's one reason this unit was, or this model was on clearance. They were getting rid of it. But anyway, it's uh, served its purpose. It's it worked real well other than, than that issue and the overheating. Um, doesn't really overheat. I mean, it just it runs hot and the fans run all the time instead of intermittently, which puts a drain on your batteries. This is our trap door. We are in a pier and bean house. So normally this is what we're looking at for the for the um, floor. And we put a carpet over this and, and all. But let me show you what we have here. And this is not snow. We are in Texas. <laughs> we don't wear... We rarely ever see snow in this neck of the woods anyway, down here between Austin and San Antonio. This is actually blown in insulation. It's the closed cell foam insulation, which we have under our whole house. Break through it here, obviously, to uh, maintain our batteries. And um, you can see our batteries. Hopefully you can see them. It's a little dark under there right now, but we have six volt golf cart batteries. And you can see there, we've got one connected to another there. Another one there connected to another one there. So these are in series. And we've got four sets of them just like that. So we've got eight batteries total. These are, these are all um, 200 amp batteries, six volt. When you run them in series like this across here, your voltage increases, it doubles. So you go from 6 to 12 volt, although your amperage does not. So between these two here, we have 200 amps at 12 volt. You add another one here, you're adding another 200 amps. So we got 400, 600, 800. Then you, we've got the, the ground wire here and the positive wire on this end over here. So that in a sense, that's parallel between the two rows. And um, so we're getting a total of 800 amps at 12 volts, which is a very frugal system. Uh, a lot of folks have, uh, you know, recommend the solar batteries, the gel cells, and yeah, those are great if you're really putting together a more professional system, whereas you've got a lot of usage and longevity, and plus, well, the main thing is if you've got the money. Um, we're all about sustainable frugal living so we found that it's uh takes a little bit more maintenance well it takes maintenance period for these we've got to keep the battery terminals clean which i'm not doing a real good job of. i've got to clean these 
and, and also check the level in the batteries. That's what this filler is here. That's what that's for. And um, But that's something you, you don't have to do very often, every three or four months or so. And so it's not a big chore. It's not a big deal. Uh, and it's a lot cheaper than the gel cells. The gel cells can run up to like a thousand bucks a piece. Uh, these here, when I bought them, they were like 65 bucks a piece. And I got, and I got eight of them. I actually, you can see they're different labels. I got four of them, and then I went back and got four more a couple weeks later. Uh, and they had different, they had a different brand, but it's exactly the same specs. Which that's one thing you want to do on a battery bank. You want to make sure you use the same spec batteries. You don't want to mix batteries. You don't want to put a 100 amp battery with a 200 amp battery, and or especially mixing voltages. You don't want to do that. Um, some people will recommend or say, yeah, go ahead and use car batteries. Some people say never use a car battery for solar power, but here's the thing. Car batteries, they're not made to withstand the deep cycle that these will. These have real thick blades. Car batteries have real thin blades. Um, but here's the thing. You've got, in, in order to be frugal, you've got to be aware of your usage cost. And if you can get car batteries for free, why not use them? They'll still work. They, they're not going to last for five or six years like like the solar type batteries or like these batteries. Um, the regular gel cell batteries will last uh, uh, on those, you know, typically they might last up to eight or ten years. Some of them have long guarantees. These six volt golf cart batteries will typically last for, you know, six or eight years. Whereas a car battery might only last a couple of years. In, in, or maybe even over, even a year. But if you're getting them free, uh, it's not going to hurt anything. Go ahead and use them. And if you and if you can get them for ten bucks, even if you look at the cost, your cost of usage uh, calculated by your cost and your time that you're able to use it, uh, I see nothing wrong with car batteries. Don't be ashamed of it. Anyway. Um, just wanted to show you our very frugal system. When you want to get into something like this and you're interested and you call a consultant out from a company, they'll come out with a clipboard. They'll start scratching down everything in your house, including your microwave and your, I mean, everything from roof to basement. And they'll suit your quota like $25,000, which is crazy. Uh, you can start small and just work your way up. Um... And that's exactly what we've done here. This is a very frugal system. Like I said, the batteries were $65 a piece. That was the most expensive of everything. The uh, solar panel was $250. And then the uh, inverter here and the charge controller and all this wiring and parts and pieces was probably another, oh, maybe another $500. So grand total, we're probably looking at about $1,800 for this system. And if we need be, we can, like I said, pull the wire from right over there and um, connect it to the inverter, and we're completely off the grid again. We've got LED TV. Uh, a large part of this, just like I said in the other video about the rainwater collection, you've got to conserve water. Well, just like that with a solar energy system if you want to remain very frugal and do it on a shoestring budget budget you got to make cuts you if, if you're going to watch tv can't watch tv all day long um and you should have an led tv which uses very little energy uh you should have a laptop instead of a desktop pc they use a lot less energy you can't use a microwave uh, microwaves aren't very healthy anyway um but uh, microwaves aren't good. They're only good for disinfecting rags and washcloths and things like that. Anyway, uh, instead of a, a microwave, we use a toaster oven. But you just got to make changes like that to uh, if you want a frugal system. But you can do it. Just don't trust the salesman that come out with a clipboard. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting kind of long-winded here, as I usually always do. Um, if you have any questions about anything you see here or would like uh, some help, uh, contact me. And you want to make sure you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well so you get alerts on our new YouTube videos.
So until next video, God bless you.